it's very important that your dog learns not to jump on people. And there are some people that your dog absolutely loves. You know, they've maybe known them since they were a puppy and they get excited every single time that that favorite person comes over or whatever. So we're going to show you an example of that with Joy uh, and a couple different ways to approach that. So she gets really excited when she sees Uncle John. And um, so we're just going to practice and give you an idea of what happens when or what you should do when things get a little bit too exciting. So we're just going to meet John. And if she gets, I'm just going to move her away. And I'm going to actually reward her for walking away from John. That's really hard. We're going to try it again. Hey, here we go. And just talk to her. Hey, uh-uh. Good. So I am just moving her away and she's getting rewarded for don't be so excited when you see John. Okay. And then we're also going to work on a sit where John can take a treat and he's actually going to get her to sit, not touching her. She's too excited. Once she settles down, once she calms down, then he can actually pet her. But you've got to do a lot of this to get your dog to, to relax when they're around people. Okay. Get ready. Right. Okay. Sit. Oh, sit. Sit. Go on. Joy. And again, that's all that's going to happen. Okay, and she loves Uncle John. So again, leash, collar, treats, clicker, food coming from John. Let's keep this really, really controlled. People just put themselves in situations all the time where, you know, people are like, no, no, don't jump on me, don't jump on me, oh, she's great. You gotta get this under control a little bit. Okay, we're gonna do it again. Okay. Make a friend. Sit, sit, sit. Yeah. Sit. Okay, so she gets taken away because she tried to put her feet up. Good. And I'm going to reward her back here for walking away. Okay, ready? Let's go. Good. Sit. Sit. Good. Yes, good girl. Nice job. Joy. And I want to be able to call her away. Really, really important that she understands that walking away and coming with me is almost as good as meeting Uncle John. Okay. So until you get this happening, he's not going to pet her. He's not going to touch her. Things, you know, this has to get to where she just kind of like, oh, okay, we're just going to do that thing again where I walk up. You know, he's not going to touch me. Now, if you have Uncle John that comes over to your house, Uncle John needs to get down on the ground when he sees Joy. So we're going to try this again. John's going to come in, and the two of them are just, it's all fair and love and war on the ground. Ready? Let's go. And and go and now we can be crazy it happens down here now when he stands up he's going to ask her to sit sit hey sit oh a little sit. shake off that's sit. okay sit sit go on look at her cookie sit. Go on. good i'm going to reward her for that now again go ahead and go back down crazy time on the floor so happy crazy play time this is fine Again, all's fair in love and war. You can wrestle, you can do whatever, but it happens on the ground. Then you stand up and go for your set. Sit. Okay. Go on, sit. Sit. Hey, sit. Go on. Nice. Good job. So crazy greetings on the ground. Dog walks up and sits, feet on the floor. Anytime people are standing upright. This is a great game to play. A lot of, um, you know, to do with your, you know, again, if you want to play with your dog, there's nothing wrong with playing with your dog, wrestling with your dog. I don't know any guy that doesn't like to get down on the ground and roll around and wrestle with their dog. That's fine. You stand up, it stops. Then go ahead and start doing it again. Just get down on the, on the floor and play wrestle with them and then stand up and it stops. So they have to understand that, you know, grandma, you know, is not a target when she comes in the door and we're gonna, you know, knock her off her feet and her wig falls off. So we just have to understand that, you know, the dog has to understand. People that are standing upright, you can do this with little kids. It's like, you know, and, and you also have to watch people throwing their hands around because people have a tendency to just move their hands all over the place. Try to make sure people keep their hands close to their body so there's not this big target to um, for the dog to be jumping and grabbing things. Again, just approach, dog sit. The other thing is um, in, instead of like when the person walks towards, so John, come out and stand on the edge of the rug there. So we're just going to have John stand perfectly still. And this time... Joy has to be the one that does the sit. We're going to walk up. Joy, let's go. Sit. Sit. Good. And he does nothing. 
It's all us, Joy, let's go. Good girl. So we're gonna do walking around him, approaching, and you can do this with all your family members, neighbors, whoever. Your dog has to settle down before they go and they say hi. Got it. It's so exciting for greetings for these dogs because again, it's how we, it's like every time the neighbor sees the dog, hey, Joy, you know, and the voices get high and everything gets exciting and the dog gets excited. Dog gets overexcited, jumps on the person, and then they're like, no, stop it. They don't understand that. Tone this down. Quiet greetings get quiet dogs. Crazy, excited greeting. I mean, I don't know any household that doesn't have little kids that as soon as they see the dog, they start squealing the dog's name. Dog's gonna react the same way. So again, tone it down a little bit. Have your kids come in with a treat, and instead of, you know, don't pet the dog until the dog sits. I know it's hard, but it's really the only way that these dogs are gonna have good manners. Talk a little bit today about um, when your dog should wear their vest and how the vest actually works. A lot of people say that my dog behaves so much better when he has his vest on than when he has his, his vest off. You need to be careful about that. It shouldn't make that big of a difference to um, good behavior versus crazy behavior. Your dog will start to pick up on when the vest goes on that they're about to do something, that they're either gonna go somewhere. It's just like you putting your shoes on and your dog figuring out whether you have your dress shoes on or your tennis shoes on to what they're gonna be doing that day. Pretty smart about that. But we want good behavior, whether the vest is on or the vest is off. So some things to remember. If you are going to let your dog play out in the yard or out in a fenced in area, especially with other dogs, well, even just with you, like throwing ball, they really should have their vest off. So vest comes off, it's playtime, it's happy time, whatever you're gonna do. Vest goes back on when you're gonna go back to walking nicely and having all of their manners. Of course, their vest needs to be on when you're going to any kind of store or any kind of establishment. It just lets people know that the dog is a service dog. It's not required by law to have a vest on your dog, but it's always good to have some kind of identification. They can have an ID tag from the organization that you're working with. Again, they're not required by law to have that, but anything that curbs the general public from forcing themselves on you, like asking, it's like, you know, hey, your dog's not wearing a vest or your dog, the less you have to explain, the better. So I do think a vest is a good idea and having an ID on them is also a good idea. When you, in the car, you have to be careful about putting your vest on the dog in the car if they're too young. If they're too young, they're gonna eat it. They're going to, you know, chew on the straps. They're gonna chew on your vest. Vests are not cheap. So we wanna make sure that uh, you, your dog is ready for that. If he's a puppy, maybe he's in a seatbelt harness and he's, and he's harnessed into the car. And then you work on getting the dog out of the seatbelt and getting the vest on. So you do have to be careful because the door is open. You know, if you open your back doors to your car, whatever that might be, you do, you do need to be very careful about letting the dog push past you. It's a great place to work on your stays with your dog. So he um, understands, you know, removing the seatbelt, putting the vest on or putting the vest on and, you know, just before he gets out of the car. So it is something that you do need to practice. Don't wait until you absolutely have to do it. Make sure that you have a practice session where your dog gets into the car, vest comes off, seatbelt goes on. Then the same way coming out of the car, the seatbelt comes off, vest goes on. He stays in the car until you ask him to come out. As far as a family dog, if you have yourself and another person or maybe you have six or seven people in the house when the vest is on the dog he needs to be with the person who is the handler the vest goes on dog stays with mom or dad the rest of the family needs to ignore whoever the person is that the dog is serving it's the when the vest goes on the leash has to be handled by that person and the dog stays with them now if you're a facilitator for someone you still want to make sure that the dog understands who he's working for. So if you have a child with a disability, or if you have an older person with a disability or somebody who's not very able to handle the dog by themselves, I suggest using two leashes. If you have one leash that is attached to the, the harness or the vest, that possibly can go um, and have the child hang on to that or have the person who might be unable to give commands to the dog. Maybe they can just have the dog attached to them by the vest or, or a harness. And then the person who's actually uh, giving commands and instructing the dog can have a second leash. That way you're in control of the situation, but the person who the dog is actually working for feels like they have some control of the dog as well. The other thing is you want to remove the vest. I think when you, if you're just going for a casual walk, you, the vest should not be on the dog. I think dogs should behave themselves all the time. 
and they should definitely not be pulling on the leash but if you're just going to go for a casual walk and you want to let the dog sniff and you want to let the dog do all this you know kind of stuff where he's just a dog take that vest off have him on a, a regular leash and collar and and just let him go for a walk don't let him pull but when the, that harness goes back on or that vest goes back on he knows that he is working and he needs to stay close and he needs to listen